So we are actually at a storage unit location. Our shop is uh, 25 by 40, so it's the biggest shop in the uh, in the area. We build tiny homes, but mostly micro campers. The uh, tiny homes, there are so many people who do it and do it well that it's hard to stay competitive in that market. But we found a niche kind of in that micro campers, in that micro camper market. So stuff like this, five by eight, you know, you, you can pull these behind a smart car, our smallest model. Oh, so here is us going through the side of a lake with, with one of our campers. This is our personal camper. A super deep hole and somebody yelled at us. They said, oh, you can make it, you have a truck. And we're like, okay, so it was very deep. But no, our, our camper did fine with it, so. So I, I'm in the military, uh, in the Navy, but I spent some time with the Marines. And so they really ruined camping for me. But Tessa loved to camp, so I thought, well, if we have a camper, that's, you know, I can do that. But the issue was, was all the campers were so expensive. And so I started looking around and teardrops really kind of caught my eye, and then so did tiny homes. And I was thinking, like, why can't we mix the two? And so I built our first camper. And then people were just offering me money for it at gas stations. So I decided to, to start this business of building tiny homes and so we start with a basic flatbed utility trailer. So, so this is like a, a heavier duty utility trailer, but it's harder to find them with just a plain flatbed with all these rails. So what we've done is we have cut them off in the past, but the issue with that is then the trailer gets so flimsy and it's just not as structurally sound. So we, we still leave them up. So it, it's framed just like a house. We use two by fours in the key structural like pieces on the corners and, and any like high weight bearing places, but everywhere else we use like two by twos. And then outside we use plywood, OSB, house wrap, and then we put the siding on, and all the exterior siding is held on by screws that's hidden by the trim. And then we use brad nails to, to put in the rest. It's a treated lumber, treated pine. So basically, if you were making a deck, you would use this. Mm -hmm. And the roof? You just pick that up as well, the hardware store. Yeah, yeah, pick it up. So as you see, the unfinished edge. Okay, so here's, you see this house wrap over the OSB. Here's the, the stuff that blocks it so we can secure this down water can seep through, like leak through here. And, and yeah, so then what we'll do along this edge, Eli, can you grab that three inch galvanized steel? Yeah, so this is a cut to size, you know, but, but yeah, and then it just holds there so that way water sheds off. And you learned that just from? YouTube. Really? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know, I didn't, like, I was, I was saying I had a welding experience, but I didn't have a ton of woodworking experience. So the first one I built, I figured it out. These are double pane, it's regular windows. The first one we built, we used these plexiglass windows and then they just took forever and they, they broke eventually. And so like after that, it's just kind of, you realize don't reinvent the wheel. It, it, you know, the reason windows are the way they are is because they work. These are built exactly like houses. So they insulate well, you know, we've stayed in them. Uh, when I work multiple, sh I work at the hospital, at a hospital in Colorado. Okay. But when I work multiple shifts in a row, I'll just bring one of these down there with me and then I'll stay in it. So I've stayed all this winter when I stayed plenty warm. And... I always make fun of Tessa for this picture because she took a bagel picture with it. But <laughs> this is like the snowstorm that we woke up to. Uh, but uh... How big is this? This is five by eight. So five feet wide, eight feet long. So it fits a full size mattress. We get a tri-fold mattress just off the of Amazon. Okay. It folds into a couch back here. This one actually is gonna have a table that drops out of the ceiling. So this was, I, I picked this up, this is a relay bar. So we'll store up here on the roof. And then it's that way when it's storing, you can see the, the old shutter. And then it'll drop down and level out. And I'll have this, you know, this table here. Wow. And there'll be benches on both sides. And how does it drop, I mean, the chain? So actually what we're using is plumbing steel. And so this is traditionally used for plumbing. But, so coming out of the ceiling, it'll, it'll have an angled piece. It'll be screwed in here on both sides, and then it'll hang from the ceiling this way. And when you're not using it, we'll just back this out. Then, so this will still be connected. And then we'll have these two hooks on the ceiling. And they, it just locks in, and it stays there like that. So you unscrew to get it. To yeah. Get that. How'd you come up with that? Uh, Somebody said they wanted the table, so I said, okay. <laughs> and I kind of figured it out, you know. Because this space is eight by five, so 40 square feet? 40 square feet, yeah. 
And then our smallest one is only four by six, so 24 square feet is tight. Here's the inside of our armadillo, the, the tiny one that I was talking about. So it has storage back here, two giant windows, a wall outlet, a twin size bed. So this is one that we did. This guy's a musician, but so in here was an ice box with a drawer. Here's the bed that I was talking about that folds into a couch. We had storage up top. We had battery operated lights. So you just push them, just ran off AAA batteries, storage space. Yeah, and this bunk for his kid. Um, here's our personal one. These are the benches on the two sides that flip up. It has a skylight, so, so like a stargazing window. It has a double French door, so it opens up double doors. And then the bed just folds out over the top of the benches. So, so the idea is for the space to to adapt to the use. Yeah, it's it's, it's a multifunctional space. You know, so some people find it gross, but you know, your bathroom is your kitchen, is your bedroom, is your <laughs> it, it, it's everything. And then the, the compost toilets that we use are actually very like clean. The feeling this little thing has inside, sort of cozy little cabin feeling, it's missing some of these modern, more plasticky type of interiors. Right where you feel like you're inside in a, of a car. The small space helps. And then we've, the, the type of stain that we use on the interior also helps. We, we advise for kind of a, a, a darker ceiling and maybe like a darker floor, but then light, yeah. light colors. Cause it, the light makes it feel bigger. So you can't stand in there, but you can. No, it's, it's five and a half feet at its tallest point. So a little too tall for me. Tessa can barely stand in there. So Tessa will show the customers you know what their products will look like based off these drawings. So this is a horse tooth we've done in the past. So full size bed and then we built a kitchen and then this is an induction stove so it won't start unless it has metal contact. So they put a small mattress up here for their kid. And then it had an ice box that pulled out a little storage cubby. Let's see. Oh, this is a, a, a single lady who wanted to travel the country but was on a budget. So we built a platform out of the back of her Honda or her uh, Toyota RAV4. <laughs> and then so it folded up and like she had all this storage for her stand-up paddleboard and her dog. And this is our smallest model, an armadillo. So this is more meant for a single person. So it had a compost toilet, a sink, a stove, a twin size bed, two ginormous windows that had this slant. And this one only weighs 900 pounds and it's light enough to pull behind a smart car. This is in the Black Hills there. But no, we, we take it's. our, yeah, we take it <laughs> everywhere. Our, our location is ideal because Wyoming has compared to Colorado. Most of our business comes from Colorado yeah. and it's only a couple hours away, but Laramie has great, like Wyoming just has a great business climate as far as, you know, there's no state income tax. It's just cheap to like operate, which to keep our prices low, which is what makes us special. Just to put some numbers on it. The typical teardrop runs around, like for the cheapest one that you can possibly find, it's $8,000, but most is more commonly around $12,000. And so our horse tooth, our most popular model, right now we're selling it for $3,000. And our smallest model, that's $2,250. One thing that we've done is we've sold it to some people who have been living like out of their car and are homeless. They'll purchase, you know, one of these from us. And it's a step above being homeless. Oh, no, it's locked. What's the size of it? This is six by seven. So it fits in the back of a Tacoma. And it weighs around 800 pounds. So this is the inside of our Santa Fe uh, when the couch is up. And then so the back here it has a sink and a stove. And... We have a futon couch that's a full size. Folds out to a bed. We have their storage underneath. So this basically hangs over the truck bed. This comes out a foot. And then same as the other side, it comes out a foot. It's secured down with these two straps here. And then there are two on the bottom. And then, so these go to the frame, and then those go to tie down points in the truck bed. Uh, we can build them to fit any size truck. How many uh, structures have you built so far? Uh, we also have built quite a bit of furniture, but actual campers, we've done 12 so far. We build them, uh, it only takes me a week or so to build, a week and a half. And this is with going to school and working. So, you, like, we spend a lot of our spare time doing this. My first set of tables that I ever had were the rigid set. It, they're cheap and, and like not super awesome all the time, but they, they get the job done. So just as stuff breaks, we replace it. So like this is my rigid impact driver and I was driving the self tappers into the metal frame mm -hmm. and it caught on fire. So then we had to buy a new impactor. We build a custom sign for everyone. We don't have a single one that's the same. 
This is with a wood burner. Every single camper we make, like I said, is custom. So we always do a custom sign with it. And, and it's always, you know, this isn't obviously isn't a factory. It's a small storage unit. So everything is hand done um, by one of us. It, it does have a, I, I don't know, what does Tess always say, Eli? Rustic modern is what she goes yeah. for. Yeah, rustic modern. She's like, I want it to look like a barn, but I want it to be modern or something like that. <laughs> Housing is so expensive. We plan on moving to Oregon when I go to medical school, and, and housing is so expensive there that we're thinking of building a full-size tiny home and taking it up there with us. But one thing that really affects our area is student housing. So you know how much money people dump into rent, and at the end of renting, you have nothing to show for it. If you have a tiny home, you can put, or if you get a tiny home and say you can have a loan, you put money towards that instead of rent. At the end, you have some equity to show for it. <laughs> at this point in my life, you know, adaptability is far more important than, you know, a permanent structure that I live in. I, I, I certainly think there's time and place to, you know, purchase a house and settle down and do all this thing. But we're moving so often. Work in a different city, go to school in another. We love the outdoors. So we go camping almost every weekend we can. Your house, instead of it being here in a single spot, it, it is more adaptable than, 